for a long time, darkness drove my motivation. I was so afraid of the unknown. And less than a year from signing on the dotted line, he took his life. Military life was all I knew. I'm a special warfare combatant craft crewman. I didn't know what to do without that role. Transition is not just about the service member. Transition is about the entire family unit. As a society, we are getting better with mental health as far as a stigma. And it doesn't have to be specifically just for veterans. It could be for any person. If I choose mental health plan or activity, there's a sign of weakness with that. And I need something that's going to help me come out of this hole. Asking for help is what someone who would be weak would do. No, the strongest thing you can do is say, I need help. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it, man. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. You guys swimming? Oh, I love it. I love it. Thanks for swimming. My name is Mike Andre. I served in the Navy for 30 years, 21 of which was in the special operations community. Thank you so much for being here today. So why this swim? Why is it so long? Why are we doing so many pull-ups and push-ups? Because it didn't matter what special operations pipeline you completed selection for, it was hard. Many tried and many failed. Today I'm participating in the Honor Foundation's first ever San Diego Swim for Saw, or Special Operations Forces. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, I think we're gonna have over 50 swimmers and look at all the volunteers. It's like double the volunteers, so that's awesome. Appreciate the support, for sure. We're gonna have a ceremony, say some words. We're gonna run south. We're gonna cross, over. it's like a mile if that. We're gonna cross over the road. We're gonna get into Glorieta Bay and swim Coronado, underneath the Coronado Bridge. We're gonna get out, we're gonna do 100 push-ups, 22 pull-ups for veteran suicide, get back in the water, swim to the USS Midway, get out of the water, and then do another tribute there. It took me six months to prepare for this, probably. Uh, just swimming two, three times a week. The swimmers are mostly alumni special operators who completed the Honor Foundation program and transitioned from the military into their next career. When I went through the Honor Foundation, I was so afraid of the unknown. That was the hardest thing for me. I didn't know if I was going to have a job when I retired. I didn't know who I was going to be when I grew up. I didn't know what my why was. I was stuck. They help you figure that out. So we're raising money to support future fellows as they begin their own journey in finding their next mission in life. My name is Sarah Wilkinson. My husband was Navy SEAL Chad Wilkinson, who served over 20 years in Naval Special Warfare. As he was approaching the 20 year mark, I hoped he would choose retirement. I hoped he would choose us. When I encouraged the idea of moving on from the military into the civilian sector, he responded, I don't have any skills. Looking at a man that holds a college degree, an above average IQ, a critical thinker, a team player, an out of the box problem solver, especially under stress, he was level headed and a fair leader. These were just a few things that immediately came to my mind. These are highly sought after skills from mainstream businesses and private industry. These characteristics aren't solely his, but rather skill sets many of our highly trained military carry. I look into the crowd and I imagine many of you carry these skills. He couldn't see that. He re-enlisted for more years as an operator and less than a year from signing on the dotted line, he took his life. There are many ways our current military may struggle with their mind, their emotions and or their stress during or post service what I've seen firsthand is that our uniformed and most are most vulnerable during their transition from active duty and moving on to that next chapter. 
An unplanned course of action and fear of failure can exacerbate their physical and mental hardships. The Honor Foundation provides a cohesive transition, transition program in providing our men and women a smoother trajectory into civilian service a place where they assess their own interests, foster their individual goals, and learn how to nurture the next phase of life. I wish my husband had the opportunity to benefit from this program, but myself and my daughter Kinsley and my son Hudson, we are his legacy. We will continue to support this program for years to come, and we hope you all will too. My name is Matt Stevens. I'm the CEO of the Honor Foundation, and I spent 26 years in the SEAL teams, retired in 2017 as a captain. Who we serve is the men and women of the U.S. Special Operations community. So that can be Navy SEALs, Green Berets, boat guys, Marine Raiders, Air Force combat controllers, Air Force Special Operations pilots, uh, whatever, whoever serves under the U.S. Special Operations Command umbrella. We start with why and purpose at the Honor Foundation, and it is the most critical piece of transition to figure out who you are as a person. Can I get to 100%? Yeah. Have it. So, so what would you do to it? Mumford. Being deliberate, introspective, and really taking the time to think about what's important, what your priorities are for anybody going through a transition. That's the most important thing. It's not the, the tactical skills of getting resumes out there, networking, things like that. They are important, but it's really figuring out what's, what's in your own mind first. The more you truly open up about that, ask for help and share it with others, you get so much more back in return. And there's probably five other people right next to you who are having some of the same issues. And so once the first person opens up in a class, um, it generally goes pretty quickly. And Mike's a great example of how to do that successfully. Six boys, one girl, divorced parents. My dad rolled out when I was 12. So basically my mom took care of all of us somehow. She was absolutely amazing. Growing up, I was an active kid. I played baseball, basketball, skateboarding, surfing, you name it. I became the captain of the football team and the captain of the baseball team. My oldest brother was the father figure that I never had, along with my coaches, my football coaches and my baseball coaches. So I knew when I graduated from high school, I needed to join the military. I had no other choice. I needed some discipline. So I joined the military at 17, my mom signed my waiver, and I ended up staying for 30 years. I'm a special warfare combatant craft crewman, a SWIC. We're the ones who insert and extract special operations forces into and out of places they probably shouldn't be in the first place, all by boat. I got pretty beat up. I've had four shoulder surgeries, herniated discs in my back, herniated discs in my neck. The last year of my service, COVID hit. And like many others, I drank way too many IPAs, I ate way too much food, and I didn't work out. So needless to say, I, I ballooned up to 271 pounds. That's the heaviest I've ever been in my life. That's when I finally said, nope, I can't do this. Military life was all I knew. I didn't know what to do without that role. The Honor Foundation helped me transition to civilian life. Mike Andre! Woo! Let me show you the classroom. 
I've never seen Mike without a smile and a can-do attitude. He welcomes everybody, members, staff, into the building in such a genuine and awesome way. I, I'm so thankful we have Mike. I'm Laura Josh. I'm the area president for Gallagher Benefit Services. Uh, for the last two years prior to that role, I've been running the Viva Resource Center. I'm the senior director of operations at the Viva Resource Center. We take a holistic approach to healthcare. We teach our members the benefits of yoga, acupuncture, mental health assistance. We help them transition mentally and physically and whatever they need. He, in particular, I think really has embodied the values of what, what we do and understanding the holistic living and how to take care of yourself and how to be honest with where you are emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually in a way to, um, that really resonates with our members. Yeah, I was stationed in Germany for two years. I went to a TBI, traumatic brain injury, and a pain management clinic. And for a month, all they taught me was how to improvise my movements. Uh, they didn't tell me I couldn't do anything. They just told me how to limit my movements. Anyone can walk with herniated discs in their back. Anyone can run or swim. It's just a limited amount of movement. That's what I want to teach our members. Take care of your own health. So with yoga, acupuncture, eating, healthy nutrition, cooking classes, the combination of all that, that holistic approach, does the only thing that works for me. And I think it's going to work for our members too. I know it's going to work for them. I'm Carlotta Vikane, and I am the Mental Behavioral Health Director with RISE, with the organization that supports the VRC, the Viva Resource Center. I come from a family of, of military. Uh, my dad was a 22-year career Marine, and firsthand, I saw what transition looks like from his perspective and a family perspective. And at a young age, I, I didn't realize what I was seeing, but as I got older, and sort of working in the community and the military, you know, with military families and service members from a mental health point of view, it really made sense to me to really focus on and ensure that people who are transitioning out of that lifestyle are getting what they need. My name is Danny Santos, I'm a retired Master Sergeant. I spent 20 years uh, in the Marine Corps, uh, four years as a regular infantryman, and my last 15 years as a Marine Raider. For a long time, darkness drove my motivation. I mean, there were things that we had to do that we just had to keep pushing towards and you continue to push those emotions down and you forget what it's like to be happy. I have to give credit for, to the Honor Foundation um, and to my board of directors, my mentors that helped me do a lot of self-analyzing uh, to understand what my internal driving factors are. Um, it took a lot of talking to people, professionals, to understand what I was going through, why I was going through it, um, and then just being comfortable, being uncomfortable, um, and learning who you really are beyond the military. So I'm a first generation immigrant. Uh, both my parents fled El Salvador in uh, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, because of the Civil War. My father, uh, Daniel Santos, came first, uh, established himself in Los Angeles, worked about four jobs at one time, and eventually brought his whole family back from El Salvador as well. On one of those many trips to El Salvador, Purposely, my father took me to where he grew up at. Um, we walk down into this valley, 
we walk through this river where these two river meets and uh, there you come to a small town called La Junta. La Junta means where two rivers come together. He showed me his house where he grew up at. Like I said, no running water, no electricity, a small room uh, with just a bed. And he purposely sat me down at eight and nine years old and was like, hey, this is where you come from. Don't ever come back here. He's like, because I left so you can have more, but don't ever forget where you came from either. It took a toll on him. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away when I was 12, died by suicide, um, and just didn't have the coping mechanisms needed, you know, to uh, overcome his own internal obstacles that he faced. I think it's very important we take very substantial steps to deal with the emotional stress that we bring, the uncertainty of transition, the uncertainty of losing your, your, your identity. So I successfully transitioned to a non-profit, non-governmental organization called uh, Spirit of America. Uh, Spirit of America is a privately uh, funded 501c3 that helps the U.S. support national strategy. I was helping out with the evacuations in Afghanistan. I was actually in Tajikistan. Um, because it's a nonprofit organization and is based out of DC, we had the opportunity to help out with some of the charter flights. Spirit of America was able to provide immediate humanitarian uh, aid in specific locations where there was a dramatic influx of Afghan refugees. I think it is something we can all share. Um, not knowing what your next step is, is very emotional, especially when you have a family to take care of as well. <laughs> Sophia and I, we enjoy classic cars, so we'll go to car shows when we can. Um, try to go to the beach as much as possible. And now with Benny, uh, we spend a lot of time playing uh, with, with the dog. Uh, she loves to paint, so she's a very arts and crafts type of girl. So I try to encourage that as much as possible, so she has all her paintings and stuff, so I encourage her to be very creative. So whatever I can do to support that is uh, one of my priorities as well. I'm very open with her now about what I want to do and how I want to do it and why I think I'm doing what I'm doing so she can understand where before I was just coming and going and it was based off of my mission, right? And I couldn't really tell her why I was doing what I was doing. Uh, but now as I've transitioned, I understand that it's very important for her to know uh, so she can cope with what I'm doing and when I'm gone. Transition is not just about the service member. Transition is about the entire family unit. And uh, those, there, there's a lot of programs out there for just individual service members, but it's got to be a contact and a family sport because you know it, it's a it's a team decision. When you're dealing with a journey whether it's a transition from the military, a transition for your health, everything that fits around it, your relationships, your family, your community, tie into how you process and handle and deal with what you're going for. So we really welcome families, spouses, partners, children to come in and be part of this journey. Because if you're truly going to experience healing, experience that next level of where you're um, gonna go with your health, it really takes getting that whole village engaged in it. If it weren't for my family, I wouldn't be here today. That's all there is to it. My son is really, he's like my best friend, right? So I missed half of his life, like deploying overseas. And I'm just trying to make up for that now. Like, like the skating, the surfing, stuff I probably shouldn't do as a 50 year old man, but it keeps me grounded. It helps with my mental health, it relieves stress. It's, uh, it's the only thing that does. So spending more time with my son in the water or at a skate park or camping or riding mountain bikes, I can't get enough of that. 
and that's why I have to stay healthy uh, so I can do things like that. If everybody can line, just line up along the shoreline, shoulder to shoulder, so I can get a head count. The hardest part was probably the second swim. It was a little over two miles. A little windy, the wind picked up, a little choppy, so crossing the channel. Uh, that was not fun, but we all made it. San Diego is such a, a military town. To get the amount of people out here this year is incredible. It, wait till next year. There will be twice as many people, twice as many volunteers, twice as many swimmers, and it all goes to a good cause. It all goes to help transitioning veterans, help them find their why. Yeah! My goal within the next five years is to establish my own nonprofit that provides service dogs for uh, veterans. A dog will allow a person to understand that there is happiness out there. Being able to show a veteran that's going through something that there is something happy on a daily basis that you can look at, that you can feel that's gonna be there with you that could potentially save their life is very important. And it doesn't have to be specifically just for veterans or somebody that's, you know, gone through what I've gone through. It could be for any person that is willing to say, hey, I need help. I'm in a dark place right now and I need something that's gonna help me come out of this hole. I do think as a society, we are getting better with mental health as far as a stigma, but we still have lots of hoops to go through because there still is, is a belief that if I choose mental health, or I choose to do a mental health type of plan or activity, there's a sign of weakness with that. So often we think about asking for help as what someone who would be weak would do. Um, and what we're saying is, no, actually the strongest thing you can do is say, I need help. Because we haven't been conditioned in how to deal with our traumas, deal with our backgrounds, instead we're we're overeating or over drinking or um, not taking care of ourselves, having a lot of stress, anxiety, depression, that really if we could deal with that underlying stressor, a lot of the issues that drive chronic disease and health overall could be mitigated if you're willing to, to go there and really deal with what's going on with your mental health. That first step of just asking for help is so critical and how do we reduce those barriers as much as possible because people don't have to suffer the way that, that often we do by ourselves. You know, whether or not you are struggling over here today or if it's a health issue, it's a mental health issue, it's a combination of all those things, you want to be able to know that you have resources and options that are customized to who you are. We're, we're so very used to getting, I think, cookie cutter pieces that one thing applies to all, and that isn't necessarily what's helpful for an individual. It doesn't mean that that service isn't helpful, it just may not be the best service for someone at a particular time. So here at the VRC, we like to offer a variety of options for individuals to look into to create an overall whole body experience, whole mind, body, spirit experience that's gonna help them be their best person. So the Honor Foundation alumni have first priority, and if we have extra spots, we open it up to anyone that wants to swim. No limitations on age or injuries. 
we had people out here today that swam with one leg. I don't know if you noticed that. We have people out here that have several surgeries. There are people out here that have no physical injuries, but they have lots of mental injuries, and they're out here swimming. So anyone is welcome. I was thinking about all my lost brothers. When I was taking those strokes, and the only thing I could think about is all the people that have gone before us, the people that we've lost that are no longer with us. And that's what keeps you going. If I can do this and I can help out just, just one person transition, then I mean, I've done the right thing. My father never asked for help, but I broke that cycle and it saved my life. And now I'm moving towards my next mission in life. It's like climbing a mountain or taking a journey. We're always moving through transitions, through changes, and it's hard. It's an emotional roller coaster, but I'm committed to putting the physical, mental work to push towards something. To reach higher and to help others stand taller. We're on this journey together. Thank you.